Well, praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to another edition of our Lazarus Movement. I am so happy to see you guys. I'm so happy to have you a part of our Saturday session yet again. Um, it's been it's been a wild ride this week, so I'm happy that you have decided to come back and be a part of what it is that we are doing here on our weekly Bible study. I hope you guys are ready. I hope you read your chapter. Uh, we're going into chapter five today um, in this journey. So I am hoping that you guys are ready and rearing to go. If you are a regular member of our, our movement, go ahead and put where you are watching from in the comments. Uh, if this is your first time, you can put that in the comments too. We are very happy to have all of our viewers, all of those that continue to support and be a part of our Lazarus movement. Oh, y'all can't find my book. Oh, never mind. Ooh, for a second, I thought I lost it. Uh, that everybody is uh, interested and still uh, raring to go as a part of our movement. Um, this book, this space, this journey that we are in is such an interesting journey. It is such a thought-provoking kind of a journey, and it really is challenging us to think a little differently about how we interact with God and how um, what he does and what, what he can do for us um, with respect to the level of faith and what we do um, for him in this what if space. So let me go ahead. I know I should have put it next to me. I'm so sorry. Um, this <laughs> book is called If, I know you guys can't see it because it's backwards, um, but it's a book called If. It is by Mark Batterson. Um, and the title of the book says, Trading Your If Only Regrets for What's for God's what if possibilities. And we have just been diving into this. Last week, we talked about um, what did we talk about last week? We talked about forgiveness and redemption and the fact that there is no condemnation now that we are in Christ Jesus, that God really is for us. God really does have our best interests at heart, regardless of what we've been told, regardless of what nonsense we have been fed, no matter what uh, religion says, uh, our faith in God gives us the belief and it gives us the product in our daily lives that God really is for us. His grace and his mercy endures forever, and it follows us wherever we go. Um, in Jesus's uh, sacrifice on the cross, if that isn't enough to show us that God is for us and has our best interests at heart, I don't know what else is. And today we're going to get into a concept, I should say, um, more than a, a journey topic, but it still is a part of the journey topic because of what it is. It is something that I think people can take for granted. I think individuals have um, abused what it actually is and the purpose for it, um, but we, we aren't gonna waste any time. We're gonna jump right in. Let me just make sure y'all are out there. I mean, granted, I enjoy talking to myself, but I just wanna make sure we are working on all cylinders here um, with regards to our Lazarus movement. So, yep, I can see myself and it looks like all the volumes and stuff are working. So we are good to go. So I'm going to pray and we're going to get started and let's go. Father, in Jesus name, we thank you for this day, this gorgeous day that you've given us. Uh, you didn't have to do it, but you did, God, and we are so grateful. God, in this place, in this place and in this space and in this time, God, we just ask that you open our minds, open our hearts to learn and hear what thus saith the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So chapter five is titled The Million Dollar Fast. Now, here's the question. The question is, what if you tried a food fast or a social media fast or a fast from complaining or whatever it is that, that you feel like you need to, to fast for? Uh, what if you did that for five, for 10, for 21, or even 40 days? Now, I know I just heard five people out there in social media land gasp when I said 40 days. 
And that's because <laughs> sometimes we don't really understand the concept of fasting. And when it comes to multiple day fast, we kind of defeat ourselves before we even get there. We're like, oh my gosh, 21 days. Oh my gosh, 40 days. I don't know if I can go that long without whatever said thing is that we have prayed and asked God um, to reveal that we need to, to fast from. Or we already know the thing that is interrupting our relationship with God that is consuming our time, um, that is consuming our thought processes against um, the time that we need to spend with the Lord. And, you know, for any of us that have been churched or gone to church for any length of time, we've done a fast here or there, um, you know, particularly in my case, like my church does a fast at the beginning of every year. It helps us to focus and to zone in on what it is that God has for us in this year. It helps us to renew our minds. It helps us to develop some spiritual fortitude and some spiritual muscles so that we can uh, go about doing kingdom business. And sometimes you fast for an event. We've done that as well. Um, my my church, our, our music and arts ministry, we've done worship nights. And before those worship nights, we take, you know, a day or two to fast because we want God's presence to show up in the place. We want people to be free, to be able to worship him in spirit and in truth and be loosed from the things that are holding them down and holding back their relationship with God. And then, you know, you fast for breakthrough. Sometimes you need financial breakthrough or you need a spiritual breakthrough or there's something going on in your household or something going on with your health where you feel like you need to pull on that supernatural power of God to come in and just break through that situation. The thing with fasting is, is really what is your motivation behind fasting? Some people, because we talk about fasting and, you know, there are studies, health studies and stuff that says intermittent fasting is a great way to lose weight. People misrepresent that concept and add it to the fast that you may be doing in your spiritual life. And yeah, one of the benefits from fasting is the fact that you lose weight. Your skin clears up. Your digestive tract is a little cleaner. Um, you know, fasting helps to clean out some of the things, uh, the, the things in your blood and, you know, all of these other types of things, because whatever fast you're doing, you know, you're restricting yourself from the typical things that you eat or the typical things that you watch. So you're getting more sleep, you know, all of these types of things. Yes, you do lose weight, but that isn't the purpose of fasting. Boy, second funny. So let's go ahead and give a basic definition, right? Um, and this definition is a combination of definitions that I have um, collected along the way um, that come that that talk about fasting. So in one flat definition, uh, fasting helps us to draw closer to God, to surrender ourselves to him, to hear God's voice and his direction, develop spiritual strength, to increase our faith faith and to release God's supernatural power into our lives and or situation. I'm going to say that one more time because it's a whole lot of words, right? Basic definition for fasting is fasting helps us draw closer to God, surrender ourselves to him, hear his voice and his direction, develops spiritual strength to increase our faith and to release God's supernatural power into our lives and situation, right? According to this book that I have, um, that is by Jettison Franklin, it's called Fasting, who to thunk? He recognizes or has found seven different types of fast. And we're kind of going to go through those fasts relatively quickly, okay? So the seven types of fast, starting with the three-day fast. The example that we use for the three-day fast is going to be Esther. So if you go to the book of Esther, and I'm sure you know Esther's story or you've seen One Night with the King. Um, in the book of Esther, chapter number four, right around verse number 13. No, I take it back. Uh, verse number 16. Um, Esther is getting ready to go before the king. So... 
it has been told to Esther that just because she's in the house of the king, it does not absolve her from this judgment that is coming for the people of Israel. So um, long story short, they was getting ready to like complete a full genocide of the children of Israel, right? And um, Esther was going to be the key to saving the saving Israel, basically. So in order for her to be able to do this, she had to find favor in, from the king. Because if you went before the king and he did not drop his staff, uh, you was going to be dead. So, you know, in, in all of the things that Esther was doing, I'm quite sure going through her brain was like, oh my gosh, what if he doesn't, you know, like drop his staff for me? What if, you know, something happens? So on and so forth. Hey, auntie. Um, <laughs> no, your comments would be a show hilarious. Um, and with that, uh, Esther said, me and my maidens, uh, are going to fast for three days. And she urged and encouraged the people of Israel to do the same. Let's go ahead and look at the, at the scripture. So we're going to go to Esther chapter four. So Esther, the fourth chapter, probably would be helpful if I open my Bible app. So Esther chapter four. And we're going to start at verse number 16. Well, actually, let's start at, at verse number 15. So it says Esther sent back her answer to Mordecai. So Mordecai had told her, you know, don't think, well, that's up in verse number 12 ish, I think. Um, don't think that just because you live in the king's house, you're the one Jew who will get out of this alive. If you persist in staying silent at the time, at a time like this, help and deliverance will arrive for the Jews from someplace else, but you and your family will be wiped out. Who knows? Maybe you were made queen for just such a time as this. So this is what he's saying to her. So Esther responds to him by saying, go and tell all the Jews. By the way, I'm reading from the uh, message version of the Bible. Uh, Esther sent back her answer to Mordecai. Go and tell all the Jews living in Susa together. Fast for me. Don't eat or drink for three days, either day nor night. I and my maids will fast with you. If you will do this, I will go to the king, even though it's forbidden. If I die, I die. Mordecai left and carried out Esther's instructions. So this was a fast because she needed favor from the king. So we needed God's intervention. We needed his supernatural power. We needed him to, you know, work on the heart of the king so that when she showed up before him, that he dropped his staff so that she'd be able to have an audience with him to be able to talk to him about this atrocity that was getting ready to happen to her people. So in this fast, there is no food or drink. Uh, this is one that if you uh, feel that God is leading you to do this, that you have to be very careful um, because, again, no food, no drink. So you're not even drinking water like there's nothing going on. You are seeking God's face and denying your flesh the food or the water that, that it is desiring. OK, the next fast is the 21 day fast. And this is a typical one that a lot of people adapt to, a lot of churches adapt to. Um, and this example comes from the book of Daniel. This is going to be Daniel chapter 10, um, verses two and three, I think is where it starts. And then there are other verses that kind of, well, let's just, let's just go to it. I don't even know why I'm, I'm playing games like that. Right. So Daniel, it's right after Ezekiel chapter 10. We're going to start at verse number two. And it says, during those days, I, Daniel, went into mourning over Jerusalem for three weeks. I ate only plain and simple food, no seasonings or meat or wine. I neither bathed nor shaved until the three weeks were up. Now, I don't know about that, but the food part, the fasting part, um, you see it says three weeks. So three weeks, 21 days. Um, he ate no meat at all. So we're talking about fruits and vegetables and water only. Um, and he did this fast because he really was trying to get into some understanding um, for Israel. He was really trying to, to figure out 
what Israel's next move was, what they were going to do. Um, and God's response to him was visions of Israel's future. The enemies that would come, you know, in the next couple of years, and then what was going to happen to Israel after that. So when you look at that, it really is a fast for focus and clarity and for breakthrough, um, which is typically what it is used um, used in conjunction with. Okay. The next fast we're going to look at is the one day fast. And this is a fast of self-examination. And we're going to go to um, let's go to the book of Leviticus first. I was going to do it out of order, but let's do it in order. So Leviticus chapter number 23. And we're going to go to verse number 27. And I'm reading this out of the Amplified. And it says, also the 10th day of this seventh month is the day of atonement. It shall be a holy called assembly, and you shall afflict yourselves by fasting in, penten in penitence and humility and present an offering made by fire to the Lord. Okay, so now we're going to go to another scripture that kind of mirrors this. It's going to be Jeremiah, and that's going to be chapter number 36. And verse number six, and that says, therefore you go and on a day of fasting in the hearing of all the people in the Lord's house, you shall read the words of the Lord, which you have written on a scroll at my dictation. Also, you shall read them in the hearing of all who come out to the cities of Judah. So this is a one day fast. This is a fast of self-examination. It's setting time aside for us to hear from God, for us to seek him and to do some self-reflecting and to consecrate ourselves. So these are moments where you actually are trying to figure out some things about you <laughs> and some some opportunities where some things may be blocking. Um, I can remember um, being in Colorado and, you know, being away from a home church and struggling to find, you know, some semblance of um, camaraderie and some semblance of belonging as I was trying to find a new church. And I literally had to do this several times because I just felt so dry spiritually because I, I just didn't have the connection. And I was wondering if it was something that I was missing, if it's something that I wasn't hearing correctly from God, or if there was something that I was doing that was blocking um, my relationship with him. And um, in those one day fast, like God really did some great revelations um, for me, gave me some clarity and it directed me to one place, but also in that clarity, it let me know that the reason that I couldn't find some place to stay is because I wasn't supposed to stay. Um, he gave me a place to be housed for a moment um, so that when I went to the next place that I wouldn't have to, again, kind of re-detach myself from another another place. So found a place that would cover me and keep me and, you know, told me that this wasn't the place that I was I was meant to stay. So it it's a wonderful thing for us to be able to have a way to connect and to accelerate what it is that we um, are actually asking for and seeking from God and fasting gives us an open opportunity to be able to receive. Another type of fast or another time when we fast um, that we find in the Bible is fasting right before a battle. So if we go to the book of Judges chapter 26, so before you get to that verse, um, just to kind of give you the backstory of what's happening in the chapter, um, Israel is getting ready to fight the tribe of Benjamin. And the reason that they have to fight the tribe of Benjamin is because the tribe of Benjamin is wilding out. Like they are being lascivious and just lewd and just being perverted and they just you know, YOLO in their lives up a storm. And it's just, God is not pleased. <laughs> so God told Israel that this is what you're getting ready to do. And this is the um, 
the battle where a lot of people reference the fact that um, before the battle, they sent Judah out first. They sent out the praise and the worshipers. And I don't really think that that's by happenstance that there's also fasting in this chapter um, because in that fast, we have to prepare ourselves um, for it. So that space of praise and worship um, gives us an opportunity to put ourselves on the altar. Um, if you look at the structure of the tabernacle out in the outer court was the place of sacrifice. It's the place where they had to make the sacrifice and then wash themselves before they went into um, the the next part of the, the temple. Um, I'm sorry, the tabernacle. So again, sending out Judah first, sending out the praise and the worship gives us an opportunity to give up and offer ourselves as a sacrifice. We give up a sacrifice of praise, right? And in this, in this space, uh, they, they fasted and then they were able to, um, execute the battle and win. Okay. The next type of fast is a fasting to lift God's judgment from somebody else's life. Hallelujah. I'm quite sure somebody fasted for me because man, I, mm, it could have been, it could have been me. I'm just saying. <laughs> so let's go to first Kings chapter 21. So that we can see this in scripture, because this is one that I actually had to do a little bit of research on because I had never heard anything like that before. Like, I know we can pray for somebody else, but, I, you know, I got to I got to look for it in order for me to be able to understand it. So first Kings chapter 21, and we're going to start at verse number 27. And it says, well, actually, let's start at verse number, mm, let's start at verse, so it's it's just so much of the story that y'all really need to hear. Um, okay, so basically what's happening, if we go up to verse number 20, right, um, Elijah has come to King Ahab, and he's given him well, that's back in verse 19. He's telling him, hey, you have done all of this stuff. You've killed all these people. You've taken all of this land and God is not happy with you. So he's telling me to tell you that the place where dogs licked up blood, they're going to do the same thing to you. And King Ahab is like, man, what is you talking about? Like you found me out to be an enemy. Like I don't understand. Um, you know, what's going on. And he's saying that God is telling him that he's going to bring evil and utterly wipe out his whole like life, his whole life, his generation, everything. Um, so what ends up happening is he gets down to verse number um, 26 and he starts to I guess, realize that God's not playing with him. So in verse number 27, uh, he understands what Elijah has been telling him in all of these words. So what he does is he rips his clothes and puts on ash, um, puts on ash, puts on sackcloth and ashes and is repenting quietly. Um, and then what it says uh, after that in verse number 28, and the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite saying, do you see how Ahab humbles himself before me? Because he humbles himself before me. I will not bring the evil in his lifetime, but in his son's day, I will bring evil upon his house. So up in the, in the earlier chapters, there is fasting for that situation. So, um, yeah, you see, you see how fasting can change somebody's attitude, somebody's heart, and then that gives um, God enough time for, well, it gives the person enough time for God's grace and mercy to do the work that it needs to do so that the person can turn their life around. It gives them another chance to get into um, God's favor. It gives them another chance to turn from the wickedness that they're doing. It gives them another chance to see the error of their ways and to turn away from it. 
Okay. Uh, the sixth way coming up last two, um, fasting for healing. So in the book of Isaiah chapter 58, um, it, it goes into, um, and they call this, they call this the fasting chapter. Um, which is super interesting. And in this block of scripture, it really does talk about the type of fast that God is calling. So let's go ahead and look at that. So we're going to Isaiah chapter 58. And I'm going to read this one from the New Living Translation. Nope. This one we're reading from the New American Standard Bible. And we're going to start again at verse number six. And it says, is this not the fast that I chose to release the bonds of wickedness, to undo the ropes of the yoke and to let the oppressed go free uh, and break every yoke? It is not to break your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into the house. When you see the naked to cover him and not to hide yourselves from your own flesh. Then your light will break out like the dawn and your recovery will spring up quickly and your righteousness will go before you. The glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. And then you will call. I was just want to read my more. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, here I am. So the verse that says your recovery will spring forth quickly. So that's what it's talking about. Um, fasting for healing. So in the beginning, we talked about um, in this scripture, the fast. And then as you get to the end of the scripture, because of the fasting, you will recover your health quickly. So I've seen and heard people do this. Um, I've seen a lot of people uh, recover from like real bad sicknesses and um, get the healing that they um, have asked God for. So it does work. It can work. Uh, if you have the level of faith to believe that God can work the miracles that you're asking for when you're asking for, um, when you're doing the fasting for healing. And this is just ushering in God's healing power into your situation and into your life. The last fast is the dominion fast. And this example is the example of all examples because this is Jesus's fast. Um, we all uh, are familiar, at least, um, if we've watched uh, Passion of the Christ or any movie about Jesus, uh, we <laughs> recognize that there was a fast that Jesus did when he was out in the wilderness after he had been baptized by John the Baptist. And while he was in the wilderness fasting for 40 days, at the end of that fast, here comes Satan trying to tempt Jesus to do some things and to be thrown off of the path to the cross that he came for. So that's going to be in Matthew chapter four. It's that whole chapter. There's a lot of verses we won't read. But at the beginning of the chapter, it says that after Jesus had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, 40 nights then here comes Satan to tempt him. Um, and when we look at the long string of Bible history, we see that in the beginning, because God gave Adam dominion, we see that in the book of Genesis, where he says that he's going to, he gives us authority through Adam to rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air. And he gives us the opportunity to be stewards of what it is that he has given us here on earth. Well, Adam loses that dominion when he bites the fruit. Remember, I said Adam, not Eve. Eve bought, bit into it first, yes. But sin did not come in until Adam bit because God gave Adam the, the command. Okay, Situ uh, conversation for another show. <laughs> so you see Adam lose dominion when he ate the fruit. If you continue down the stream, you see Esau lost his birthright from eating um, what his brother had made for him in order for him to steal his birthright. We see that in when Israel was in the wilderness, that God had supplied them with supernatural manna from heaven. Like it just showed up when they needed it. 
And then they got extra on the weekends because they had to keep the Sabbath day holy. So God didn't produce it on that day. And instead of continuing to eat the supernatural food that God provided for them, Israel turned and ate some food that they had caught. And it slowed up their progress into getting into the promised land. So when we see Jesus go through his 40 day fast and resist his flesh and temptation to eat. We see that Jesus has now regained the authority and dominion that God originally gave to us by denying the devil access and saying no. No matter what fast we choose, no matter the length of uh, time that we fast, the purpose of fasting is to break through. It's for us to gain that supernatural strength from God so that our faith can grow and to break through whatever situation it is that we are fasting for. We are fasting unto God to break whatever stronghold, whatever situation, whatever it is that we need from God. So that means any bondage, any addiction, no matter what it is, can be put to death through fasting. And we're going to see that in the book of Matthew. So we go to Matthew chapter number 17. And I know some people out there like, oh, Kristen, I know what, what scripture you're going to. So again, I'm reading this from the New American Standard Bible. It's going to be uh, verse number 21. And it says, 19. I'm trying to find it. Okay. These things is too small or either the this particular version of the Bible don't have it, um, which is why you got to watch your, uh, your versions because they have a tendency to pull things out sometimes. All right. So going to verse number, let's start at verse number 20. You don't have enough faith. If, if you got a good Bible, this is in red. You don't have enough faith, Jesus told them. I tell you the truth. If you have faith, even as small as a mustard seed, this is not the scripture that I wanted. Yep, I don't see 21 either. Like twice over, this is like the second version that doesn't have 21 in it. Anyway, the scripture that I'm looking for, and maybe I just got the wrong chapter. The scripture that I'm looking for says that there are, and I'm paraphrasing, that there are some things that only come through prayer and fasting. So that's what I'm talking about when we say some spiritual things, some things that are that we need breakthrough for, we have to fast and we have to pray because that's the only way we're going to get breakthrough from it. How you go from 20 to 22? That's the only thing I don't know. Maybe people who did these versions can't count. All right. So as we move on, fasting is a practice in saying no. So just like I said, when it came to Jesus's fast and Jesus, um, after him fasting and the devil showing up, trying to tempt him, Jesus said no to his temptation. So as we fast unto the Lord, God kind of leans into our situation and Holy Spirit then begins to strengthen us so that we can have the fortitude to continue to press on through the whatever number of days or hours of fasting that we're doing. And our spirit is strengthened enough to say no. Well, what are we saying no to? We're saying no to our flesh. We're saying no to our thoughts and desires as all of that gears towards and focuses on the Lord. So, you know, when you first start your fast, right, you are like, oh, my gosh, like I'm so amped. You know, you just are built up in like spiritual, like, uh, like you ready. You know, you've been praying. You've been asking God, you know, what what is the focus of your fast? Um, you know, or your spiritual covering has given you what the focus is. If you're fo focusing on a project or, you know, something that's going on in the church or in the neighborhood or what have you. And the first day is like, cool, like everything. Oh, the new King version. Oh, wait a minute. What's this? Uh, does not go out. Yes. See, that's it. See, new King James always got it because 
That's that's the foundation. Uh, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Yes, that's the scripture that I was looking for. So we know it's in there. It's just these versions just decided not to print it. Um, thanks, Auntie. Thank you for having my back. So again, we get this strength to be able to say no. That first day of fasting, like it's usually like solid, like you good. You on that 21 day fast, you'd have had your fruits and your vegetables, and you've been drinking extra water, so you feel good. Right around day five is when your body starts talking back to you and you start thinking about food, or you see those commercials on TV. They had the two for one on a Big Mac all week until this particular day, and they show you the, the commercial for it. Or your job decides that they're going to buy all the employees lunch. And, you know, it's pizza and french fries or pizza and wings or, you know, they taking all y'all out to Olive Garden or something. I don't I don't know what what people do or it's a potluck. Do people still do potluck? Um, you know, they, they do a potluck. So it's all this food that you can't eat. And this this is where you have to deny your flesh and tell your body no. Um, because you are focusing on hearing from God. You're focusing on whatever his will is and his purpose for your life is and the purpose behind why you are fasting. And in this fasting, we are killing our flesh. That's basically what it is that we're doing. So when you say no, you are killing your flesh, you're killing that sinful nature, and you're focusing your mind um, on the things of God, you're focusing your mind because you're reading your word, you're in whatever, you know, chapter or scripture, whatever it is based on, you know, what you're fasting for. Um, you've done your research and found scriptures that pertain to what it is that you're trying to break through. So you can read those, recite those, write them down, look at them every day as you're going through the fast. So we are focusing our mind on the things of God. We are focusing our mind on the things that we need in order to get that spiritual um, breakthrough and that supernatural power to download into our lives. So as we are focusing our mind, our mind then controls our thoughts. So as our thoughts are being controlled and geared towards the things of God, we then can command our flesh to behave because now that our mind and our spirit are in line. Now we can then talk to our bodies and say, no, nah, we're not doing that right now. Like, I know you want that Big Mac, but no, we're not, we're not doing that today. And this is, it's not going to happen today. And it's going to be okay. So when we say no to temptation, we say no to our flesh. We are then in turn saying yes to God. So we are saying yes to his will for our lives. We're saying yes to the purpose and the plan that he has for us. We're saying yes to what it is that he wants us to do next. We're saying yes to wherever it is in ministry that he wants us to go. We are saying yes to whoever he puts in our path that he wants us to talk to. We're saying yes to whatever it is that he wants us to let go of. And that's part you know, that's 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 that hard part right there, because as we fast and we look for the things that are stopping us from doing what it is that God is asking us to do or the things that are stopping um, or blocking our relationship with God, we're saying no to those things, the things that are taking up space and time, um, the things that are not working in our lives as we are fasting, you just you know, I, I see it as a a way of God ripping away the things that are standing in my way, the things that I have tried to hold on to because they are comfortable for me or they give me some level of security um, because God is asking me to step out and to venture and to have faith in something that he's calling me to do that I've never done before or have no idea um, on what to do. And I'm fasting because I'm asking for clarity and I'm asking for strength. And he's like, all right, Kristen, let's, let's go ahead and, and, and do this, but you got to move this out the way first. And I'm like, okay, God, no, nah, I'm not doing it. Um, no, nah, like I, 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 I like this thing that I'm holding on to because it's my security blanket. And, you know, if I'm getting ready to go do this, this thing that you've asked me to do, I need to hold on to this because, you know, if my feelings get hurt or, you know, if, 
if something go wrong and you know i don't know what to do i'm, I'm gonna grab back on to this thing and it's gonna make me feel better about the whole situation and god is saying no that's 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 my responsibility like i'm supposed to guide you as you move into this thing that i'm i'm asking you to do or i'm pushing you to do so you don't you don't you don't need that you don't you don't need this thing this thing isn't bearing any fruit in your life it is dead right now and it is just festering and as you know as things die they create mold and you know as mold grows it continues to kill other things so we don't want those things to be dead in our lives and then fester and then leak into or disturb or get connected just like weeds or vines and start growing into other areas of our lives so as we fast we are killing those things and we are cursing those things to their very death it is just like jesus did with that fig tree so let's go and look at that so that's going to be in mark chapter 11 and let's 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 look at the king james version when we when we go there because apparently these other versions is not is not doing us no justice so mark chapter 11 let's pull up the king james and we're going to start at verse number 12. And it says, and on the morrow, so on, on the next day, uh, when we were coming from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of here, of thee hereafter forever. That's why I don't do King James. And his disciples heard it. And they came to Jerusalem. And Jesus went into the temple. He began to do all of this casting out and all of this stuff that was going on. They was, you know, flipping, you know, Jesus is, is my favorite when he flipping tables and, you know, talking to the money changers inside. That was Monday. Tuesday, the next day, they came in the morning and they passed by that same fig tree as they was on their way. And they saw that the fig tree had dried up from the roots. And Peter called to his, you know, recall back and said, Master, behold the fig tree, which you cursed the other day. Like it's messed up. It's, it's, it's dead. And Jesus said unto him, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he has said shall come to pass. He shall have whatever he says. Therefore, I say unto you, whatever things uh you so desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have ought against anybody, you want to make sure that you forgive them so that your father forgives you. Um, and then if you don't forgive, neither your father will forgive you. So if you don't forgive, God not going to forgive you and you it's, it's going to block the prayer that you, you just had. That's basically what that says. So what we see is is that the things that are not producing fruit in our lives are the things that we need to get rid of because they are blocking what it is that we need to get and what it is that we need to give unto god we need to get rid of those things because we need to move forward in our purpose and the plan that god has for our lives so Kristen, we was in the great eight and we didn't read a scripture out of Romans. Why? Because I wanted to leave it for last. Let's go to the book of Romans chapter 8. And we're going to read this from the New Living Translation. Because I can't, I can't do the thee thou and the. All right. And so last week we talked about there's no condemnation. This week we're going to look at verse number 3. And it says the law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful 
nature. So God did what the law could not. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving us his son as a sacrifice for our sins. So this whole thing about fasting is so that the weakness of our sinful nature can be checked. That's it. At the end of the day, because our flesh does not want to behave, because our flesh does not want to do the things of God, we have to do what it takes to keep our flesh in check. And in those moments where our flesh is getting out of control, and in those moments where we have to redirect our flesh so that our flesh and our spirit and our mind all lines up, we have a tool in our tool belt that helps us to do that, and that is fasting. And Jesus went through it too. Jesus did everything and and felt everything that we feel when he came to this earth to do what he needed to do in order to get us back to where God needed us to be, and that was back in connection with him. So I leave this with you today. Don't take fasting for granted. Don't use it as a quick weight loss opportunity. Really hone in on your purpose for fasting. What if the fast that you do, whether it be three days, one day, 21 days, or 40 days, what if that fast that you do projects you to the place that God needs for you to be so that the person that's waiting for you, that's waiting for your testimony, gets an opportunity for their lives to be changed. Yes, fasting is to check our flesh. And man, let me tell you, it's it, it's not always an easy thing. There are moments and times where fasting for me, and I can, I can only speak for me, right? Where fasting was an easy thing. Like I had no, no problems. I was focused. I was there and it was good. And at the end of it, I felt spiritually rejuvenated. Like, you know, I was ready to ride whatever wave like God had for me at that time. And then there were times and moments where, man, I tell you, fasting was a struggle. Like I would be good the first week and then come that second week, like I done did something or messed it up or just was not focused or felt like giving up and throwing in the towel for it, or I'm in conversation. And you know how it is. You kind of stand in there and you you talking and somebody offer you something and you just take it and you put it in your mouth and you just like, oh my gosh, I really wasn't supposed to eat that. And then you feel bad because it's like, oh, I should have known better. Like my brain should have clicked in and said, man, you can't have that. You fasting. And then, you know, you send yourself down this spiral of, oh my gosh, instead of just saying, okay, Lord, like I, I, I really did mess up, but you know, I'm back on it. My mind's back to being focused and, and you repent and you, and you move on. We have to use the, the controls that God has given us to do what it is that he's asking us to do. And yes, for some of us, fasting from food is easy. But fasting from that TV is difficult or fasting from social media. We're like, no, nah, I can't I can't do without Facebook, you know, for 21 days because I got to get, you know, I got to see all the tea that's on Facebook or I'm going to miss something that's going to end up on the calendar, the social media calendar of the world. And I ain't going to know what it is. It it the fasting thing, the thing that you're fasting from is what's important along with, you know, the, the purpose of the fast. It could be food. It could be social media. It could be a person, whatever it is. It's whatever is getting in the way of your relationship with the Lord or the thing that God is showing you or revealing to you that is, you know, put, put a little bumpy stuff in, in y'all's relationship. When you go to fast, ask God for the revelation. God, what is it that I need to fast from, like, show me what's disconnecting me from you. What is keeping me from you? 
And then you have to do and put your safeguards in place to keep you on track for your fasting. Display it somewhere so that you know what it is that you're supposed to be focusing on. If your fast is breakthrough for your children or salvation for your children, put that somewhere where you're going to see it every day. And then whatever scripture you're basing your, your fast on, write that scripture out, write the reference so that when you see it, you can then pick up your Bible, whether it's on your phone or you're using a paper Bible so that you can read it so that you are now starting your day, reinforcing your mind and keeping you focused on what it is and the purpose that you're fasting for. If you're doing a food fast and you're doing like, let's just say you're doing a Daniel fast, prepare yourself for it. So make sure before you start that you look at your refrigerator, clean it out from all the stuff that you don't need to be eating. Don't put it in front of you. Don't leave the temptation sitting there. Candy is a big deal to me, and it's certain types of candy. Apple rings are like the death of me for real. And right now, too, it's been Starburst. So any of the like really fruity, chewy stuff, that's whew, bane of my existence right now. When I get ready to fast, I got to get rid of all of that stuff. I don't necessarily have to throw it out. I just have to put it away so that I don't see it. Um, and sometimes that's shoving it in the closet, that's putting it in a container and putting the lid on a container and putting it in another room, whatever. I just need to get it out of my sight because there might be a moment where I'm weak and I'm trying to, to get that focus and I'm trying to get back and that candy look real good or, you know, I'm an emotional eater sometimes. So I could, you know. Whenever you fast, the enemy is always going to try to derail you. So he going to, you know, put something in my pathway that I don't recognize right away. That's just going to make me emotional. And I'm going to see the bag of Starburst. And the next thing I know, it's going to be empty because I inhaled the whole bag. And then I'm going to put myself in a space where I feel like I failed God, though that is not true. But you want to get rid of all of the temptations so that is not easily um, it's, it's not easily in front of you for you to be, you know, tempted. You don't need to be eating hamburgers for the next 21 days. Why would you leave the hamburger sitting in front of you, right? Freeze what you can ever freeze, give it away, whatever. Prepare yourself for the fast before you start. Another good tip, uh, especially if you're doing a food fast, uh, prep your meals before if you can. Um, that, that helps you to only have to grab and go. You don't have to worry about, you know, nothing else. It's already prepared. It's already there. Just go grab it and, and you go, go on your way. Um, the other things too, is if you're doing social media fast, take the things off your phone, um, you know, or turn the alerts off so that you don't, that you don't see it. If you're easily, you know, button pushy, um, there's a young lady at my job that is currently doing um, a social media fast. And she just, she had to take all apps off her phone. She's like, I just, I'm, I'm too easily distracted. In those downtime moments, you know, at work, you're accustomed to doing it. And sometimes your body goes through muscle memory. So, you know, you didn't click off the computer and you want to relax for 20 minutes and you click on, you know, TikTok and you're scrolling. And before you know it, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm not supposed to be doing this. So take the apps off your phone. Um, I think those are all the like tips and stuff uh, that I have for um, fasting, but know that that you do have the power um, within yourselves to to do it and to get through fasting. Um, it is it is something that that God really does ask for us to do. Um, and it is something that we should be doing regularly, not one time a year um, when the whole church fasts. Um, but this really should be a part of our daily walk. Um, as Christians so that we can die to ourselves as a part of our dying to ourselves daily um, and a part of just making sure that our connection with Father God, that our connection with Jesus and our connection with the Holy Spirit is solid. And we want to make sure that we are checking our flesh on a regular basis. Amen. Amen. 
men. So, you know, I know that chapter was not, you know, crazy, crazy. And a lot of this stuff, um, many of us may have already known, but it's always great to have a refresher and to remind ourselves why we do the things that we do. It's not out of ritual. It's not out of religion, but it is really about relationship. And there are things that you have to do in your relationship to keep your relationship strong. When you're dating somebody, you spend time with them, you, you know, know things about them, you remember things about them. And fasting is a part of that relationship that we have with God, that it is a way for us to continue to strengthen our connection. And as unbelievers, sometimes we just, we miss that train when it comes to that connection and God's grace and mercy shows up in our lives and he tries to reestablish that relationship with us. And, you know, that train keeps on going past, but then there's one day and one opportunity where we recognize the train, like we're at the stop this time and we recognize that the train is coming past and we are ready to get on board and go forward in whatever it is that God has for us because we've heard him speak to us. We've heard him and we're ready to give our lives over to him. So if you are someone who has not given their life to the Lord, let me open this up and give you an opportunity to be the next passenger on that train. Well, why do I need to get on the train? Well, so happy that you asked that. God sent Jesus into the earth over 2000 years ago to die on the cross for us. We're really in that season right now where Jesus is preparing to go to the cross. He is riding into the city of Jerusalem on a colt and they are yelling Hosanna because they believe that Jesus is going to change their lives and he's going to lead the revolt against the Romans to be able to give Israel back what they believe they have lost. And they missed the opportunity to see that not only is Jesus powerful in the level of authority that he has, but he's also humble enough to go to the cross to save us that we deserve not to be saved because all we do is uh, delude ourselves to believe that, you know, we have this relationship with God. And at, at that time we didn't, we were, you know, doing whatever we wanted. We were living in sin and in, you know, uh, our own transgressions because of the thing that Adam had done so many years prior to that. And the only way that we could get back to that relationship with God is for a major sacrifice to happen. And it had to be a sacrifice where there was no spot or blemish and nobody on the face of the earth could meet that challenge except for God sending his son, Jesus Christ, wrapped him in flesh and allowed him to spend time on earth to give us what it is that we needed and then to go to the cross for our salvation. Jesus died on the cross because he wanted you to be a part of his family. He wanted to connect you back to his father. And the only way we get to God is through Jesus Christ. Well, how is that? You have to believe in your heart. You have to confess with your mouth that you want Jesus Christ to be Lord of your life. And at the moment that you do that, just like we saw in the scripture, when you ask for it, you believe that you have it right then and there. So we ask God to come into our lives, to be our Lord. Um, and we believe that he died on the cross for us and rose again on the third day. And right now is sitting at the right hand of the father, making intercession for us. And at that moment that we say that, we believe that we've received our salvation and become a member of God's family. So if you've never said this prayer before, say this after me. Say, dear Jesus, I know without you, I'm lost. I believe that you came to this earth and you died on the cross for me. I believe that you rose on the third day and that you are sitting at the right hand of the Father having a great conversation about me. Holy Spirit, come into my life, lead and guide me and keep me so that I can do what it is that God has purposed in my life to do. It is in Jesus name we pray. Amen. 
Well, if you said that scripture for the very first time, there is the biggest and best party going on in heaven for you right now because you have hopped on that train, moved from the tunnel of darkness, and you are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. So as we're on this train, you got on at the stop where we believed. Now we're getting ready to pull into the station of belonging. And what that means is you get a chance to join a Bible teaching, Bible preaching place so that you can learn more about the decision that you've made, as well as to learn about this thing of salvation and what the benefits are to that. When you join an organization like a sorority or fraternity, there are benefits that come along with that. And there are goo gobs of benefits in being a part of God's family. Somebody tell me how to spell that word. Um, <laughs> so uh, these places that we belong are called churches. And I have friends all over the continental U.S. as well as some in some other countries that would love to help you connect to a place that you can learn more about the decision that you've just made, as well as about who Jesus Christ is, the characteristics of God, um, so that you can see and uh, grab a hold of those tangible benefits in your life. So if you're looking for a place to go, drop me a comment or send me a message and I'll be able to connect you with somebody that can uh, introduce you to their church. If you're anywhere in the uh, Baltimore metro area and you have no place to belong to, you can come along with me. Uh, the name of my church is New Creation Christian Church, 5401 Frankfurt Avenue. And my pastor is Apostle A. Bryant and Lady Sheila Claxton would love to pastor you. So send me a message. You can come to church with me tomorrow. Amen. So got on at the station for Believe. We have pulled in uh, to the station of belonging. And now we are moving on to the station of becoming. And in that place that we belong, we learn more about who Jesus is. We learn about his characteristics. We learn about who he is to us. We learn about the names of God so that in those moments that we really do uh, need to pull on him because of whatever situation we're going in, we call on the right characteristic. When we feel like God isn't there, we can call on Jehovah Shammah because he is present. If we need some guidance, we can call on Jehovah Rohi, who is the great shepherd, and we can get some guidance. If we feel like nobody can see us, we call on Jehovah Rohi because he is the God God who sees. And when we need that breakthrough, we can call on Jehovah Bel Parazan because he is the Lord of the breakthrough. And we learn all of those things um, in that place where we belong. And then we take on those characteristics to become more like Christ. So thank you guys so much for joining me this afternoon. Thank you so much, Miss Noreen. I love you. Thank you for watching. Um, I am super excited all the time, guys, when you join and when you comment. Um, it really does encourage me while I'm doing this because, you know, I'm talking to myself most of the time. Um, so uh, it really does give me some encouragement. So I appreciate you guys. Um, as always, we're here every Saturday at 7 p.m. And then every other week we do our recap session on Monday nights on our Zoom uh, platform. So we will be doing that this week since we didn't do it last week. So the 18th, yep, that's right. The 18th, uh, we'll have our Zoom session for review. So we'll review chapters three, four, and five. So we have a great amount of things to talk about um, this coming Monday. So if you follow me on Instagram or um, on Facebook, um, you'll be able to get the Zoom information there. I'll try my best to remember to put the Zoom information under this video um, on YouTube. So if you watch us on YouTube, you'll be able to come over to Facebook. To, uh, well, not come over to Facebook. You'll be able to come on to Zoom to be a part of that uh, conversation. And my family gets on and the conversation kind of goes off the rails sometimes. But we have a good time in Jesus name. And then tomorrow is Sunday. So as always, I encourage you guys to get up and go to church. Um, it is important, especially in the space when we fast, as we are on the fast, that we want to remain connected to those other saints that can support us and encourage us as we're going through this. And we can be a part of the corporate anointing. The Bible says, do not forsake ye yourselves, the assembly. 
So we want to make sure that we are staying connected to each other in the body of Christ. Even if you are getting up and going to church in your pajamas to go down to your living room, still stay connected to your church. Um, I know as COVID has kind of allowed us to be home and to be more comfortable um, with social media church, it still is important for you to, even if it's every now and again, to be a part of that corporate space. So get out, venture, go ahead and be a part of it. But the good thing is that the Holy Spirit knows no space, nor time, nor internet. And whatever is going on in the house, you can pull on that same anointing right in your living room or in your office cubicle or in your car or on your trips and still be able to stay connected to the house. But we want you to be able to continue to experience the very presence of God, no matter where you are. Guys, have a great rest of your Saturday. Enjoy this great weather that we've been having. Praising God that the weather is starting to turn. Um, you know, maybe one of these days we'll go outside and do uh, do the Lazarus movement in the park. Amen. Have a great evening. Go to church tomorrow. See you guys. Good night.